So continuing our discussions of different English and metric units of measurement, let's now talk about temperature. Temperature can be best described as a measure of the relative amount of motion in a given sample. So if you're looking at a low temperature sample, there's a relatively small amount of molecular motion. If we were to look at a high temperature sample of, for example, gas, we'd notice an increased amount of molecular motion. The particles will be moving about at higher velocities. They'll be colliding with each other more frequently. And there is overall a greater amount of molecular kinetic energy in that sample. Now the metric system commonly utilizes units of Celsius and Kelvins to describe temperature. Kelvins are commonly used in calculations as Kelvins fall an absolute scale, which means there are no negative values for temperature in Kelvins. Generally, when you're performing a calculation in chemistry, Kelvins are the go-to units for temperature measurements. A Kelvin, the unit of Kelvins to convert between Celsius and Kelvins, you simply take the temperature in degrees Celsius and add 273.15. To give you a sense of each of these temperature scales, so we have Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin, we see that 100 degrees Celsius corresponds to 373 Kelvin, because 100 degrees Celsius plus 273 gives us 373 Kelvin. We also see that 100 degrees Celsius corresponds to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's now practice converting between Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvins with a few examples. So in the first case, we're asked to convert 68 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. So we see here that we have degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 1.8 degrees Celsius plus 32. To rearrange this, we see degrees Celsius are equal to degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 over 1.8. You may want to remember this formula that we've obtained by rearranging this Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion equation. Now, given that we have this conversion equation set up, all we have to do is plug in our temperature. So we have 68 degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 over 1.8. That in turn gives us 68 minus 32 over 1.8, and that gives us 20 degrees Celsius. Pretty close to room temperature. Let's do another example where we convert 37 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So we Kelvin is equal to the temperature in Celsius plus 273.15. So 37 plus 273.15 gives us 310.15 Kelvin. And if we're rounding this to the proper number of sig figs, we'd write this as 310.2 Kelvin to reflect the fact that our input value has just one decimal place. Okay, let's do one more example, this time a fill in the blank, 72 degrees degrees Fahrenheit is equal to blank Kelvin. Now we know that to go from Fahrenheit to Kelvin, again, 
we're going to need to go through an intermediate unit, in this case, Celsius. So first, let's convert this 72 degrees Fahrenheit into Celsius. So we have 72 minus 32 over 1.8. And that in turn gives us 22.22 degrees Celsius. Remember, we don't round until the end. From here, we're going to convert this temperature in Celsius into Kelvins by taking our temperature in Celsius plus 273.15. And that in turn gives us 295.37 Kelvin that we round to 295 Kelvin to reflect the fact that our input value only has one, only has a number in the ones place. So now that we've seen some examples of temperature conversions, let's try to apply what we've learned and let's try to complete the following three examples. And let me just zoom out so we can see all three. So you'll work through these examples and then submit your proposed responses on Canvas. And we'll discuss these problems once you've submitted your responses.